to show uh, sympathy and understanding and not always make political points. We'll now progress to the 10-minute rule bill. I call Alan Brown. Madam Deputy Speaker, I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to require the Secretary of State to publish proposals for a compensation <laughs> scheme for women born between 6 April 1950 and 5 April 1906 inclusive who have been affected by increases in the state pension age and for connected purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, with so many injustices created by Westminster, the lack of resolution for the 3.8 million WASPI women is a disgrace. 3.8 million women, given the bombshell that their state pension age was going to increase from 60 to 66, just as they were about to retire and it was too late to do any proper financial planning, once many were actually already in ill health or worse, had already taken early retirement um, and planning to get by until age 60 when they thought they would receive their state pension. For nine years, this place has debated the matter, hearing harrowing individual stories with many MPs across the chamber pledging they would do all they could to help these women. But for nine years, the government has ignored the plight of these women. They hoped the WASPI women would go away. Well, they haven't. Well, unfortunately, 40,000 are dying each year without getting any form of compensation, and tragically, some 240,000 have now passed away without receiving compensation. And for those now trying to make the best of the retirement while facing a cost of living crisis, Poland has established that half of WASPI women have struggled to pay essential bills in the past six months, and even worse, a quarter have struggled to buy food. Now, we know it's an injustice, and indeed, even the PHSO judged as far back as July 2021 that the DWP was guilty of maladministration due to their lack of direct communication, and yet here we are still fighting for compensation. Madam Speaker, frankly, the majority of the Tory backbenchers, who previously were very vocal and supported WASPI women in the past, have all went quiet, including the leader of the Tories in Scotland, and as has the Labour Party. It is utterly astonishing that the best I can find for the current Labour leader is we have met many of these women and campaigners and their hearts go out to them. It is a huge injustice. He also said he would need to hear the outcome of the court case he believed was ongoing. That was back in April 2023. Madam I would say just saying our hearts go out to them is as bad as saying nothing. It is completely vacuous and there has been silence in the ten months since when the court case had already concluded anyway. So I would urge the leader of the Labour Party, instead of letting the Tories move his political dial and political compass, find a moral backbone and make a commitment that if this fag end of a Tory government won't deliver some form of compensation, then a future Labour government will. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But having said that, given that the current Labour shadow for working pensions has never uttered the words WASPI or 1950s women in Parliament, and neither is a spokesperson for women and qualities, I do not see much pressure being put on the Labour leader from within his shadow cabinet. Yeah. It is a shocking dereliction of duty from what is supposed to be the main opposition party at sure. Westminster. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Madam De Speaker, it is not just the main parties here at Westminster letting down the WASPI women. The Ombudsman has taken way too long and is still dragging their feet, so they have given the women hope and dashed it time and again over the period. It is hard to believe in the almost three years since the maladministration assessment, a solution is still to be recommended by the Ombudsman. And it is a scandal in itself that the WASPI women had to go to court to confirm the flaws in the second Ombudsman report. This process should have been closed out a long time ago, and I know from dealing with the constituents affected with this, they find this dra dragging out the process stressful, frustrating, and they feel it is really rubbing salt in their wounds. As we head towards another general election, it helps this government hide behind the myth that they cannot do anything until the PHSO concludes. But, Madam De Speaker, we also know that when PHSO does conclude, DWP are still not going to admit their failure to communicate ad adequately and admit their maladministration. So, parliamentary intervention will probably require to force the government's hand. And the purpose of this bill is to bring forward parliamentary intervention to stop <coughs> these affected women having to wait any longer. Fair and fast compensation is a simple scheme the WASPI campaign is looking for, using as a minimum level 5 of the Ombudsman scale, but realistically level 6 of the PHSO bandings is the most appropriate. 
and this bill could deliver a simple framework. So it's a practical resolution, and it's, it doesn't result in astronomical sums of money per person. It's not asking for reversal of the pension age to 60. It's not a full restitution of pensions for those who are affected by the maladministration, no matter how nice an outcome that would be. The WASPI women understand there's no blank cheque from the Treasury, and they're practical and they want to get on. That said, Madam Guest Speaker, we cannot lose sight of the fact that the UK Government actually has saved £200 billion from the decision to equalise state pension age at 66. And additionally, if we look at it around, Funding-wise, changing non-DOM tax status could bring in £3.6 billion a year to the Treasury, yeah, yeah. and changing the rates in, in capital gains to, um, to that of income tax could bring in a further £10 to £15 billion a year. Yeah. So two simple tax changes would easily pay for compensation within a couple of years and create long-term additional income for the Treasury. Then, if the government properly tackled the PPE and COVID support frauds, they could bring in even more money to pay yeah. out. Yeah. There's never been a VIP lane for the WASPI women, yeah. but by contrast, no government minister has ever agreed to meet the WASPI women. Can the difference in attitudes be any starker? Now, is that because government ministers don't want to actually hear the real stories, stories like my constituents, such as Anne, who contracted viral meningitis aged 59 and a half? The following consultant advice opted to stop working and she put in a three month notice to retire at age 60. Literally days before that retirement age, she got the news she wouldn't get her state pension until age 66. But Anne was too old school to try and change her agreement and go for ill health retirement, which would, would have been the most appropriate outcome. So she endured six years without employment or pension, and the associated stress, uh, stress of that impacted their health recovery. Marie, whose husband got cancer and had to stop working when she was age 59, forcing her to work on another seven years, doing work that required physical effort while doing caring duties just to survive financially. <coughs> Mary went part-time at age 55 due to health conditions and then got the pension age increase bombshell when she was age 59 two months, forcing her to work on for several years and having to work on through having cancer treatment in her, 90, in her 60s. Pamela, given the news at age 60, just as she retired, she couldn't get back into the workforce and suffered ill health, forced to downsize her property twice and still has a, a financial hangover. Violet, widowed at age 53 after working and, and worked since age of 15, paying NI contributions for 45 years and forced to wait another six years due to that lack of notification. Lynn, exhausted after working for 34 years in NHS, agreed early retirement at age 55, finding out on her very last day at work it would be 11 years before she got a state pension, not the five she anticipated. Nancy, widowed at age 54 while she was working part time, traumatic emotionally and then financially. She suffered umpteen chronic health conditions while caring for parents and still forced to continue taking NHS bank work to survive. Leslie, sometimes working three jobs to make ends meet and put money away for the future. Carer for a partner when he had cancer. Carer for her dad when he had cancer. And then a period of travelling to Southampton every weekend to visit her aunt. Super, uh, superwoman efforts would exhaust anyone, and little wonder she took early retirement at age 56, only to later discover she needed to buy for a further six years before she got her pension. There are countless examples of constituents would have put more money into private pensions, would have topped up their NI contributions, and those that, would have, uh, those that have had to use their savings, missed out on holidays, and generally struggled to get by due to that lack of notification. And let's not forget, Madam Deaf Speaker, many of these women are well qualified. They're all intelligent, and yet they're made to feel somehow their fault that they did not, and it's DWP's denials make it worse for these women. Westminster needs to amend for its mistakes. It's a, a reminder through how Westminster operates. The minor strike miscarriage of justice, the Hillsborough cover up, the infected blood scandal going back to the 1970s, the ongoing postmaster scandal, all issues that the three UK wide parties have been complicit in at some point or another, and it seems this place never learns. But on a positive note, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm grateful for the cross party support for this bill and I pay tribute to the tireless campaign of the Oswe women. And yeah, particularly yeah, my yeah, local yeah. ones, including Anne Hamill, who first brought this uh, to my attention, has kept fighting for justice since. Thanks. 
By sticking together, we will get some form of compensation, but even that will not undo the wrongs and emotional and financial distress for the women, but will finally be an admission of guilt and a small financial redress that can bring some relief to women who are prejudiced against in terms of work pay, prejudiced against in, uh, pension ports, and are prejudiced in, in retirement since. Thank you. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. Does so that opinion say aye? Aye. On the contrary, no. I, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Stephen Bonner, Patricia Gibson, Jim Shannon, Marion Fellows, Graham Morris, Amy Callaghan, Colm Eastwood, Peter Aldis, Wendy Chamberlain, Gavin Eulens, Chris Stevens, and myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Alan Bryan. <laughs> State Pension Age Compensation Bill. Second reading what day? Friday, 19th of April. Friday, the 19th of April. April. Thank you. We now proceed 